uh, our next speaker is uh, Takahiro, Takahiro Haruyama. I told you I'd mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for introduction. Uh, in this presentation, I talk about uh, how to break compiler level obfuscations uh, used by APT10 malware. Uh, I'm Takahiro Haruyama. I'm a senior threat researcher with Carbon Black's Threat Analysis Unit. This is today's overview. First, I talk my motivation and approach with uh, demonstration. One question, what's the purpose of this function? This function just returns the argument value. So what are other statements for? There are obfuscations used to make reverse engineering harder by changing a code flow so that it is not linear. The code was seen in APT10 NL samples. That is a RAT program observed in Japan uniquely. According to SecureWorks, recent ANL samples are obfuscated with those obfuscations. In the, uh, the previous function example was very easy, so we can read it manually, but uh, there are more complicated functions like this, like this, like this. So manual analysis for tho those functions is painful and time consuming. We need an automated uh, the obfuscation method. My motivation is to automate ANL code the obfuscations. In initial research, the obfuscations looked similar to the ones uh, described in Hexray's blog, but uh, the introduced plugin Hexray's deal didn't work because it was made for another variant of the obfuscations. So I investigated uh, the causes, then modified Hexray's deal to make uh, to work for ANL samples. Now I demonstrated the two. First, I show the obfuscated code. Uh, can you see the code? The obfuscated code uh, does not clearly flow from beginning to end. Uh, instead, there is a nested loop structure having uh, having uh, multiple flattened code blocks. Uh, sorry. So so the manual analysis uh, is not realistic. By using the tool after the deobfuscation, the code becomes straightforward. Uh, the code flows from uh, beginning to end, and the nested loop is eliminated. Okay. 
before explaining uh, the modifications, uh, I'd like to cover basics of either microcode. Microcode is an intermediate representation uh, used by either for decompiler. It's optimized in nine maturity levels uh, from low to high level IRs. Uh, sorry. By using microcode explorer, uh, it's supplied with hex res deop. We can make microcode instructions uh, in the selected maturity level. For example, uh, in low maturity level, it makes over 100 uh, instructions, and uh, the code looks like an uh, assembly language. On the other hand, in high maturity level, it makes just eight instructions, and the code is similar to language. The code is close to the compilation result. There are four key structures in microcode. Uh, basic block array, basic block, instruction, and uh, the instruction structure contains operand structures, left, right, destination, or left and destination. Hex raise the op installs uh, to optimize the callback structures, opt block T for control flow flattening, uh, opt insanity for uh, opaque predicates. By using the structures, uh, microcode explorer displays call flow graph and instruction graph. In call flow graph, this number is a block number. It's unique in one maturity level. And uh, instructions can be nested. For instance, this instruction can be displayed like this. Uh, in the instruction graph, uh, or is uh, the top level instruction and the shift left and the other or are sub instructions. Uh, the difference is important because uh, uh, it's used in data flow tracking of opaque predicates patterns. Uh, I will explain later. Now I explain the modifications. First, opaque predicates. In the original implementation, opt insanity callback function replaces an opaque predicate pattern with another expression. ANL samples require two more patterns and the data flow tracking function. The first pattern is like this. In the example before, uh, below, the global variable is either even or out. So the value multiplying the global variable by the variable minus one will be always even. Then the lowest bit of the, the negative value becomes one. So finally, the value over by minus two will always produce uh, minus one. The modified code replaces the pattern uh, multiplying x by x minus 1 with uh, value 2. The second pattern is read only global variable more than or less than immediate value. The global variable is always 0 because it will be initialized with 0, and it has only read accesses. So the pattern matching function replaces the variable with zero. And there are other variants uh, like this, and immediate value can be different. 
for example, 9. Sometimes the code tracks uh,
it catches the specific event, uh, HXC pre-alloc. That is the final event for optimizations. Uh, then calls the opt block t callback function several times. Usually, a uh, block comparison variable is unique in one function, uh, but uh, a few functions with multiple uh, control flow dispatchers have duplicated uh, variables. So the modified code detects the duplications, then applies the most likely variable in the selected dispatcher by validating the block numbers. The third modification is about uh, implementation for various jump cases. The original implementation supports two jump cases. One is go-to case for normal block. The other is conditional jump for flattened if statement block. If the next block is resolved, the call flow graph and the destination of uh, jump instruction are updated. For instance, in jump case two, block comparison variable is searched in each block, uh, each predecessor block, and with JCC and non-JCC, then change the destination. While appending the code of the dispatcher predecessor to non-JCC tail. The modified code supports three more jump cases. Case three, go to any predecessor's case, case four, two and three combination. Handling case three is similar to case two, uh, but uh, the dispatcher predecessor uh, will be eliminated. In jump case four, appending code uh, occurs twice. First, to each predecessor. Second, to non-JCC. Usually, we can find block comparison variables uh, in flattened blocks, but uh, in jump case five, uh, block comparison variables are assigned in the first blocks. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. For example, in this function, uh, EDR is assigned to ESI in block number seven. Uh, ESI is uh, the block comparison variable in this function. Uh, and the, the EDI value is assigned in block number one and two. So, in order to handle uh, this case, the modified code reconnects first blocks as successors of the flattened blocks. In this case, block number one will be the successor of block number seven. I refer to the issues uh, that I got when testing on either 7.2 and implements on 7.3. I evaluated uh, the implementation on either 7.2 uh, by using two anal samples. One is version 5.4.1 payload, the other is version 5.5 loader DLL. The modified tool could obfuscate 92% of the obfuscated functions that we encountered in the first sample. The causes of the remaining failures were first, the next block uh, number guessing algorithm failed. This, this issue has been resolved in this case, but uh, uh, it may be problematic uh, in the future because uh, the guessing is not perfect. About uh, the other two issues, uh, they have been resolved in either 7.3. I explain the improvements. 
about the first implement, either 7.2 does not propagate uh, opaque predicate deobfuscation results if the values are alias the sucks uh that means in directory referred as stack values. Uh, so the V2 value uh, will be this value and it's signed. So this code block is actually never executed, but uh, still remains on 7.2. On the other hand, either 7.3 can propagate the values correctly, so the decompilation result uh, becomes simpler. Uh, the second improvement is uh, handling conditional jumps. All jump cases can be conditional. And uh, one and uh, five cases are easy to handle, but uh, two to four cases require a basic block duplication. It was not allowed on either 7.2, but uh, uh, 7.3 provides the, the option, uh, specifically this flag value. So the modified code clears the uh, flag, then uses insert block API to make an empty basic block, uh, then copy instructions for and uh, other information. It also adjusts destinations of uh, some basic blocks uh, because uh, the API updates some block numbers uh, related to the exit block. In conditional jump case two, the dispatcher predecessor and non-JCC have uh, different block types so we can't uh, append the code to non-JC's tail. Instead, copy the basic block. About the false case uh, block, the false case block number should be the conditional block number plus one. So this, cop this block should be copied as well. Conditional jump case three can be handled in the same way, but uh, uh, predecessors can be conditional too. In that case, the dispatcher predecessor copy uh, dispatcher predecessor should be copied even if the tail instruction is not a conditional jump. The conditional jump case four is uh, the most uh, complicated, but actually I've not seen the case in the two tested uh, uh, samples, but I implemented. I think it's a rare case, but uh, control for arm flattening may fail. In that case, please, e please execute the plugin with uh, the value Xerox DAD, it obfuscates only opaque predicates uh, in the selected uh, function, so we can recover the lost code blocks due to the failure. I wrap, my, wrap up my presentation. The compiler level obfuscations are starting to be observed in the world. The manual analysis is uh, painful and time-consuming, so the automated deobfuscation is needed. The modified code, code is uh, available publicly. Uh, it can deobfuscate almost every function on either 7.3, except the next block, uh, 
number guessing algorithm failure case. I hope this research will be variable for other malware researchers. Uh, for this research, uh, I'd like to appreciate uh, Hexray's uh, patient support. And uh, I also appreciate uh, the original Sulosa road floors. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Tao team members, especially Jared and Brian. This is the references. That's it. Thanks. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Um, I think if I recall properly, I tried your script or the previous script from uh, Rolf uh, against uh, an obfuscator. It's called obfuscator LBM. I don't know if you are familiar with, with this obfuscator. But when I saw the presentation, it was looking very similar. And uh, my question is, um, how much time it will take me, uh, to me, to, for example, do the same thing, so take your script, uh, do some modifications in order to uh, get like a, you know, like a readable code, uh, and yeah, that's basically my question. Um, I don't know if I explain myself uh, properly. Um, so sorry, my question sorry, is... Sorry, could you explain yeah, another way? Yeah, yeah, my question is like, um, how much time it will take me to take your code I mean, I'm not very familiar with the microcode in X-rays, but I would like to do something similar. Instead, instead of doing uh, uh, the obfuscation for ANEL, use this malware, I would like to deobfuscate uh, obfuscator LBM. That is very similar thing with control flow flattening, open predicates, and uh, and yeah, if it would be possible, we we can have the the, the question later if you want. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks.